This is Jay from Easy Wing Chun. Today I'm gonna show you how to do a Pak Sao. A Pak Sao, literally translated in English, means slapping hand. This is one of the most important tools in Wing Chun. I'm gonna show you how to apply it in a sparring or a fighting application. And then I'm gonna show you how to train it properly with a partner. Or if you don't have a partner, I can show you drills that you can do solo. Let me show you how a Pak Sao is done. Okay, you want to come in and help me? So let's say the guy come with you with a straight punch, right? Or a jab. This is how you're going to do against it. So let's go. Right. Um, note that in mind, you don't need to care that much about the follow-up. You just need to care about the first step because it's the basic Wing Chun program, right? Technically speaking, from Wing Chun point of view, there's two ways of doing a Pak Sao. The one you just see is the lay Pak Sao. Um, okay, you want to come in and help me demo it? So, it is called lay Pak Sao, is, um, according to Sifu Adam Chan, uh, my Sifu, by the way. He classified this as a lay Pak Sao because the guy punch is fully extended, right? So, you, the only choice you have is to deflect it to the side so that it doesn't get to your head, right? The other one of doing Pak Sao is when the guy punches like this and he's called that early Pak Sao. So you see this V-shape, you want to capture this V-shape because the guy punch is now strong this way but really weak this way, right? Like this, and then you, you can turn him quite easily, right? Um, I'm not going to go in too deep on this one because I'm going to spend the next episode on this particular Pak Sao. So remember to follow my channel so that you can receive more tips and instruction on Wing Chun. From Wing Chun point of view, you can do either both Pak Sao because the Wing Chun punch is vertical like this. Okay, so when his hand vertical like this, right? It doesn't matter if you cut his legs or if you cut his hair. It doesn't matter because it's got the same kind of powers like um, doing the chain punch. Chain punch. You see, right? You can catch it easily. It doesn't matter when you catch it, right? Because it's just straight punch, right? It doesn't matter, but it matter when it's a boxing punch, right? And if you look at the popularity of Wing Chun versus boxing, obviously there are many people train boxing, right? So the first thing you don't want to do is you don't want to train against a Wing Chun guy because not so many people out there train Wing Chun, right? So many um, Wing Chun School teach you how to try to catch the punch like this, right? right? But it's only work good if the guy do a vertical punch, right? What if he do a boxing punch, right? Do, do a boxing chain punch like this, yeah? Now it doesn't work that well, right? You see his hand like this? So I cannot get him easily, right? So now here I have to lasso and I have to do many more stuff, right? Because of the nature of the shape. So when he doing like this, you see how he's strong this way too, like hands up, don't let me do it, right? You see, you cannot get the packs out quite easily, right? Compared to this one, like hands up, don't let me do it, right? And then you can do it quite easily with just like a light push, right? That's just the nature of the shape. I'm not saying that traditional Wing Chun is bad, but see now everybody come together, right? You learn boxing, you learn karate, you learn taekwondo, you learn everything, right? So it's good to keep that in mind that not everyone punch you like a Wing Chun punch, right? So now I'm gonna dissect the technique and show you how to do it properly. When you do a Pak Sao, remember the first thing you don't want to do is you don't want to chase the sand, right? Many Wing Chun school teach you how to chase the sand on the sparring match and then it doesn't end well, right? You don't want to chase the sand, you want to chase the center line. Because in Silent Tao, it teaches you like this, right? You're going like this. So technically, you cross your own center line. And if he aim for my head, he's going to meet my hand eventually if I go for my own center line, right? Does that make sense? The second mistake that you don't want to do is you don't want to sidestep when you're doing the pass out. I know this sound, this look much more easy to do it, right? Why don't you just like when he punch and then you just like that and then you chase him but this is what it looks like if the guy got cheese out at all 
it will chase you, right? And then you're in a really weak stand. That is not good, right? I don't want to fight the guy like bigger than me like this in my weaker stand, right? I want to stand strong in the ground, right? So remember, nose to nose, get in your fighting stance and don't try to sidestep, right? You keep going in. See, this is enough, right? You're going like this, right? And another mistake that many Wing Chun school teach is when the guy punch and then slap like this so that you can punch, right? So when you punch like this, that look easy to do because you make a hole so you can go in, right? If the guy punch, leg punch, and then you can punch out and then you do all the stuff, right? Of course, it looks really cool, but you can only do it if your chi sao is way higher than the guy. If the guy got any chi sao at all, like for example, um, hey, don't let me do it, right? So when he come in with a punch, you see the back fist coming to your face right away, right? When you treat somebody with a good training, the back fist coming right away. And this is not good, right? So now you end up like this, and then he can laugh so, laugh so. And then he take me, right? So remember, you want to punch, deflect it, and punch like this. So if you have a partner, this is what you're gonna do. So you get on your fighting stance. Oh, by the way, this drill, I take it straight from boxing because I want to give credit to any martial art that I study, right? So you want to get into the boxing stand, right? Your fighting stance, get in, right? And then, so one guy gonna come in and punch. Let's say K come in and punch me. I want to step in and then attack him. And then we step back and then do it, right? And then step in and then I attack, right? Step in, attack, right? And then you do it for like 30, 40 reps each. So now I'm gonna show you how to train it solo. If you don't have a partner, don't just, you know, keep your hope out and then just like chill out and then watch Netflix all day, right? Better get some reps in, right? So when you train solo, visualization is a good way of training it, right? It's already proven in science. And then you see that a lot in many martial arts. Shadow box is a one best example, right? You can always get in your stance, right? and then start bouncing so that you understand the force going to the ground. Of course, when you fly, you don't want to bounce, but now you want to like, just squeeze and tie your knee a little bit so that you can feel the force going to the ground. And then you want to get the footwork, right? Why you get the footwork? You want your back straight like this, right? It's slightly curved. This is the natural of the spine. You want it like this. So then you can absorb the force going in, right? When the force going in, it channel go right to the ground. That's what you want. And then you visualize that somebody attack you, right? And then you go, boom, boom, right? You don't want to get, duck your head, right? Go straight in. Imagine an opponent attack you, go boom, right? Go boom. And then when you get tired and then just change to um, get a wall or something so that you can try to pass out to the wall, right? That way you can feel it coming right to your feet right away. And if you want to learn about how to pass out to the wall, the next video I'm going to talk specifically deeply about it. You know, when I show you how to do these kind of movements, that kind of movement, it's cool, right? But you have to understand the true benefit of martial art. The true benefit of martial art is not, um, martial art doesn't try to make you a warrior. Because look, you live in a peaceful area, right? You, you live in a peaceful time. You don't need your fists to be hard, but you need this to be hard, right? And one of the most benefit that martial art can bring to you on the table is how you deal with your problems, right? And not so many people have the courage to deal with the problems nowadays, right? Okay, you wanna come in? So look, because he trained with me for so long, right? So now when, let's see, and moves to his face, it doesn't matter, right? He doesn't care. But let's say if I have something sharp, right? Like just, just a screwdriver, right? So now I'm gonna attack you for real, right? If you don't die, you will got it, right? <laughs> okay, all right? So, you see, as soon as I go close and I tell him that it's real, naturally he's scared, right? There's no pass out, there's, there's no nothing, right? Of course he's scared. He's gonna move to the side. They just want to save his life. Does that make sense? Uh, thank you. Um, so as you can see, 
That's just the nature of human in problems. Human is designed to run away from the problems. That's obvious, right? When the attack come, when the anger come, you you like this, you dark, right? Or you scared, right? You freeze, you run. That's just the nature. But I'm not saying that Wing Chun is the ultimate almighty tool for you to fix your own problems. But Wing Chun with its forward pressure, right? With its forward mentality, with the triangle, right? With the shaft that pointing forward, right? Maybe it can help you to move forward in life, right? Maybe it's help you to, okay, so now you can, you don't scare of the punch anymore. You can believe in your hand, you can believe in your technique, you can believe in your chi sao, right? That's the purpose of training. Everyone should have the purpose for their own training, right? Maybe martial art make you a better person. Maybe martial art help you with your confidence, right? Anything, right? Because no matter how martial art help you, it's better to help you in here, not in here, right? Because in here, you can only use it on the street, right? Who cares? If you live in a peaceful area, you never have to fight. If you're smart enough in the street, you never have to fight. But if you're strong in here, right? If you face the problem like how you train, right? You deal with it like confront the problem and move forward, right? So now, no matter you in the office, you deal with your boss, you in school, you deal with your exam, you in the hospital, you deal with your cancer, whatever, right? So now you're mentally strong, right? That the purpose of training, and that is something that I want to clarify so that you understand, right? Make sure you chase that purpose. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in self defense or Wing Chun, you can come to Metro Tao area, Vancouver. To train with us or if you live in coquitlam area you can come train with my sifu adam chan other than that remember to click the button below to follow our channel and receive more tips and instruction about wing chun and self-defense rather than that make sure you have a good week enjoy yourself and train hard